I'm Ivy Rivera. I'm a psychic medium, a Taino Arawak, and this is the 10 most common betrayals and how you can catch them. So I ran a poll recently asking you guys, hey, if I were to do a show on this type of topic, which one would you vote for and want to see the most? And the first one was 10 signs they don't want to be with you and why they're staying anyways. And the second one was this. So the 10 most common betrayals and how you can catch them. And it was like a 50-50 split from one platform to the other. I was like, there's no way to decipher which one, you know, actually uh, won here. So I went ahead and I decided to do both. Now, if you missed the first one, 10 signs they don't want to be with you and why they stay, you can go onto my YouTube at Ask Ivy and just, you know, check it out in the playlist. It's there. It's published. This was like probably two, three weeks ago. All right. So here we go. Uh, these are the 10 most common betrayals and how you can catch them. Um, little background. I have been watching relationship dynamics since I was a kid. My father was married. I believe it was three times in a five-year period. Uh, this was fairly typical in my family, and my mother had some relationships going on, some that almost led to the altar, some that, you know, did not go that far. But I was very observant. You know, I'd get picked up by my father, and I'd have a new mom. I'd have eight, eight new siblings or another, I don't it was nuts, okay? So I learned to study these dynamics. Not all of them were bad, but they were definitely chaotic and continuously changing. And they really didn't always seem very productive. They didn't seem to me that they were ever going to last. They And they didn't. And they didn't seem very loving at the foundation. And I think that caught my attention the most. Now, I'm a born intuitive. Again, I'm native. This is common in my tribe. I never went to a training to be a psychic, a medium, or an empath. I popped out that way. So I was able to use a combination of the observations from my environment and my intuition to piece together what was really going on that was obvious and on the forefront, the masks that everyone was wearing, and what was actually happening with the energy underneath, what lies were being told. I was able to figure out timelines and when these relationships were going to end or implode. And um, I think it really helped me survive and keep my sanity, but it really was as a teenager, when I started doing readings for other people, I really got into relationship dynamics. You know, once you're kind of like in puberty or coming out of puberty, all your friends start dating and everyone's getting involved with different sexual activity and, you know, things get real shady real quick. You figure out who your real friends are, backstabbing, triangulation, theft of boyfriends. Uh, there was a lot of drama and I ate it up. Not when it happened to me, of course, but, you know, in general, uh, I really took the time to give readings in those situ situations and test my accuracy. So, you know, now I do this for the public. I have a five star rating and I've been working doing professional uh, relationship reads and psychic mediumship reads for, you know, 13 years. So these are the 10 most common things that I see now. These aren't necessarily um, in perfect order. Cause I, I really, it's hard to say, um, some of these things are getting worse and I I'm tempted to move them up, you know, the scale. Um, but some of them are starting to dwindle a little bit and they used to be very popular, but like, you know, women in particular are getting a lot smarter in the last two years about things. There's a lot more discussion going on about deception, especially on platforms like TikTok. Hey, everybody, please tap. Okay. Give those hearts, share this video on TikTok. But um, it's debatable. Okay, so don't necessarily take this as like, you know, perfect order. I do want to talk real quick about a couple key things uh, you can watch for that are general red flags. And if you look back at your dating history or relationship history, uh, you'll probably be able to spot a couple of these and then you can look at how those relationships ended up playing out. And a lot of times you don't find a lot out until the relationship is dissolved. Okay. So it could take a few years for the proof to come forward, but the proof will always come forward one way, shape or form. Also, I'm just going to say, you know, this is a situation in life where it's not always worth your time to, you know, try to get revenge. You would be very wise to alchemize 
uh, these things that have happened to you from negativity into positivity, uh, from loss and pain and betrayal trauma, you know, into power and uh, an ability to go out and heal other people and talk to other people about it. Okay, try to get over the shame, but always know karma does serve. Karma will always show up. She is never late and you often get a front row seat to the karma show. Okay. So don't sit around waiting and spelling it into action necessarily, but know that it will come eventually. Okay. All right. So a couple key things that you can watch out for before we get into the list. And again, this is blanketed. Okay. We see this commonly, uh, partial reward schedules or what I like to call intermittent positive reinforcement. We talk about TikTok, for example, since they're going to shut me down anyways. What TikTok does in the algorithm, and that's why there's no rhyme or reason to it, it's it's uh, intermittent positive reinforcement. So all of a sudden you'll do a video that you thought was mediocre and it'll blow up. And you've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of views. You know, you gain thousands of followers overnight and then it doesn't happen again for like six months or a few months. And you're thinking, what, how can I re redo that? How can I you know, duplicate that or replicate. And why isn't it happening? You go crazy trying to figure out why you're not able to do it again, because it's not going to happen that way. They control the algorithm. And this is how a lot of people run their relationships. They are making sure that you are getting partial rewards. You're on a schedule and they know when they're going to give you a hit. They know when they're going to give you that dopamine. They know when they're going to show you love and affection or do that thing you've been begging them to do, that thing you're hoping for the most. And they're working you. They're playing you like a fiddle. All right. So it works in business. It works in social media. It works in algorithm content. It keeps people hooked. It's an addiction. And for any creators here on TikTok, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once you get that hit, you're hooked. Okay. Um, I think that the idea here for you is to pay attention to the inconsistency. You need to understand that people who give intermittent positive reinforcement, they're giving, they've got you on a partial reward schedule. They are in a pattern with that thing. Okay. So even though it doesn't seem to be patterned in itself, it is. And so you're going to want to start keeping track, you know, mark it on your calendar. Um, keep a little journal. If they're not going to see it, make sure you're hiding this. Of course, they'll outsmart you, but make sure you're paying attention to how this happens and know that there will always be like a roller coaster ride with it. That's why they seem really hot and really cold. They're really available. Then they're really ghosty. They're stonewalling you. And then they're in love with you. You know, they're affectionate just enough to keep you around. And that is the point of it is just to keep you around and hooked. Because again, it works with animals. It works with social media. It works. We know this from studies that it works with everybody. Okay. Keeping you around. Uh, let's also talk about narcissistic techniques. Here's what I tell all of my clients. If I see that a client of mine is dating someone or in a serious relationship with someone, um, even like family members, you know, having a narcissistic parent or sibling or whatever boss, I will highly advise that they go to Google or they go to YouTube and they learn, I think there's like 12, maybe now there's 16 narcissistic techniques. Now, what I mean by this is that people who are not clinically diagnosed as being a narcissist, because it is so rampant in our world today, because we're born from generations of narcissists, even if you're not clinically diagnosed, you know, a lot of people have narcissistic tendencies. And even when people don't have narcissistic tendencies, we have all, okay, all of us, self-included, have been able to observe the way other people manipulate and we learn how to use narc techniques. And if you're using it to protect yourself, that's one thing. If you're using it to manipulate other people from a darker, lower place, you've got a problem. And um, we all need to learn 
the narc techniques. But the most common one, and we're going to be talking about this uh, a bit today, although we're talking right now about what's blanketed over most of these 10 signs. Um, this is used pretty regularly by everybody. Um, we're talking about duality, or you could say gaslighting. Duality, the idea here is that it's causing confusion. So if you've ever been with anyone who caused you to be so confused, you eventually buckled or shut down. You feel your brain turning off. You can feel it even in your body language. It's almost like a robot. Ooh, uh, uh. Like I'm just done. You can't really think anymore. You can't function anymore. It's like your energy is so on the ground, you're exhausted. You just sort of lay down, take a nap. But it's almost like your brain keeps trying to work and trying to save itself, trying to figure out what's going on. But you can't. You can't get there. All right. So someone who's using a lot of duality or gaslighting with you is going to cause confusion. And research shows that when the human brain is confused to such an extreme or for too long, it surrenders. So again, it's a tactic that works. If they could do this to you to enough of an extreme, and if they could do this to you for extended periods of time, they will win. Your The human brain will simply give up and give in because it doesn't know what else to do. Okay. And that's really sad. So I see that all over the place. Um, a lot of people are going to the therapist or the doctor. They may have autoimmune problems along with this. Uh, you know, they may be saying like, I have brain fog. I have chronic migraine. You know, what's going on with me? Why am I so tired? Why am I so... It's this. It's this. Before you start getting diagnosed with stuff, and I can't prescribe a diagnose, before you start getting on all kinds of meds, check to see if you have a bunch of a-holes in your group or one particular a-hole who's doing this to you on a regular basis. Okay. Family member, boss, lover, usually a lover. Uh, we also see very commonly over the 10 signs I'm going to talk about, if there are children involved, um, stepchildren, you share children with someone you're co-parenting even, you don't have to be together, but you're co-parenting. Uh, it's a family dynamic, a group dynamic in that way, community dynamic. We typically will see with these betrayals, these abusers, we'll see child abuse through enmeshment. So if you see someone giving extra special attention to one child or if they're using that kid as the golden child and the other ones, you know, they're trying to um, sort of minimize so that that golden child, the one they have enmeshment with, you know, is the little prince, the little king, the princess, the queen, wifey, okay? Or like, um, you know, a lot of toxic boy moms do this. Uh, you're going to be able to track ultimately what the other betrayals are if they're doing that with one kid in particular. Uh, this could also look like emotional incest. I mean, it's basically the same idea. Flirting, here's the last one, and then we're going to get into it, okay? Flirting, period, point blank. Um, if you notice that your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever, is a little too friendly with your people, your friends, your family, your siblings, <laughs> but usually it's friends, um, maybe even your coworkers, especially if you're a business owner, pay attention to this, people who work under you, okay, too. But especially friends, if they're a little too friendly with your friends, they're a little too flirty, they're a little too comfortable, and you'll notice your friends reacting to it in a certain way, like even feeding into it. If they're feeding into it, it's going somewhere. Now, it may not be full on cheating right now, but wait till you guys have a fight. That's where they're heading. That's where they eat on the side, okay? It may, it may take until you guys break up and then it, you know, you find out a while later, 
they've been getting together, but be careful. So it's usually siblings. They'll go for, they'll go for, you know, your sister, for example, or they'll go for like your best friend. Now the friends that you can trust are the ones who are usually like not saying anything about your relationship. They're not really responding. This person is flirting with them. This person is messaging them privately. This person is trying to build some type of an emotional relationship with them. I'm um, trying to be there for them, trying to fix stuff at their house, trying to fix their car, trying to help them move, trying to give them relationship advice, trying to be that shoulder, you know, that, that safe guy in their life. Um, and this can go male or female. This can go either way. Okay. This isn't, this is a pretty gender neutral show somewhat. Uh, that is, you know, the friend who is put off by that or has their back up or is confused by that, that's a friend that you can probably trust. However, that is also the friend that's probably going to leave and you're never going to hear from them again. One day they disappear and you're like, what happened with this friendship? I don't understand. Yeah, your gross boyfriend has been trying to sleep with them and they didn't know how to tell you that. And they didn't really have proof of that. Maybe. Okay. Watch out for the way they handle your friends. Uh, no one should be too kind and no one should be like too eager to help your friend move. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to help any, nobody wants to be lifting up a couch. Okay. Um, things like this don't make any sense. Um, there's also probably triangulation going on there. All right. So if you have a, a love partner, you know, who's like talking behind your back, um, they're like a yes man. They never really bring conflict to you much. Um, they they could be super sweet with your friends and talking trash behind your back. So triangulation there as well is a major red flag that blankets quite a lot of these. OK, again, uh, I want to encourage everyone, anyone who's tuning in late, please do drop your questions and your comments. I am going to get to all of them at the end of tonight's show, but I can only take them here on YouTube at Ask Ivy. Uh, so if you anyone can moderate and grab them from Instagram and TikTok and then transfer them over here to YouTube at Ask Ivy, that would be greatly appreciated. But I do encourage everyone to switch over here. Okay. At Ask Ivy on YouTube. Let's get into it. Again, in not necessarily this particular order, um, but the 10 most common betrayals and how to catch them. All right. So the imposter lover or friend. This is a person who fakes an entire personality, their entire life. Every aspect of who they say they are is a mask. It's a fraud. And you may dig and dig and dig because you know in your gut something is wrong, but you cannot find it. And quite frankly, if you're not a hustler yourself, you're good-natured mind probably can't even wrap your head around how crazy it even is that they would lie about these things. All of these things, every single area of things. Okay. It was just like your brain will melt and fall out of your ears. It just doesn't even make sense. So you have to be careful with people that you take a lot of time. Okay. Um, the best way to catch someone who is literally pretending to be someone else, they are here to do this to drain your resources, your time, your labor, your love, your affection, your money, your home, everything. They're here to drain you. But ultimately, your soul, because they get high off watching you fall for their BS. If you Google Duper's Delight, you could see the, the face, the smile, the smirk on someone who revels in Duper's Delight, you know, which is essentially tricking someone and then feeling so good that they were able to trick you. 
So there's a certain kind of evil that goes along with this that really is very uncomfortable to watch as a reader. Um, it's hard for me to convince some of my clients who have this going on that it's even going on because like they know something's wrong, but they're like, that's too crazy to even comprehend. But yes, if anyone saw Risa Tisa's 50 part series on TikTok that made it to like, you know, the news and, you know, now she's a big name. Risa Tisa told in a 50 part video series, a story about marrying a man who she later found out was lying about everything from leaving in the morning and going to work to other residencies he, he had or lied about. She would think they were going to sign papers on a house and he had never even contacted the real estate agent. I mean, it went on and on and on. Okay. So, um, sadly her story to me was not shocking. Um, this is more common than you think. Okay. So imposter, lover, or friend. Now, you can see this um, also with friends who come in and they want to like be your bestie. And then next thing you know, um, you know, they're wanting to spend a whole lot of time with you. They don't really make you earn it. They want to level jump. Uh, same thing with lovers. It would look like love bombing with friends or lovers trying to do this, it would be excessive availability and a lot of interest in you and your life. I think the easiest way to catch them or the first thing you can catch, um, and you have to be one of those people that's like cutthroat. First red flag is the last red flag. Learn to do this with everybody, with everything, okay? But the first red flag is the last red flag. You're going to catch them in a little white lie. You're going to hear them say something that doesn't match what they previously said, or you know, for whatever reasons, it is a lie. And it may seem small, but the point is, it was unnecessary. And that is a big, that in combination with the other things I talked about, love bombing, extreme interest, availability, BFF, that's it. You need to walk at that point. Don't get tied up in this. They are masters at this. All right, let's get into number two. This one's tough. Um, we're going to be seeing more of this in the upcoming probably two to three years. I think a lot of people are going to not necessarily come out of the closet, but they're going to be exposed as being closeted gay. So um, the closeted gay, okay, one of the most common betrayals I see now. I am a huge supporter of the LGBTQIA community. I am all about people having the support that they need to come out and be authentically who they are and to have marriage rights and all of it. However, what we are still seeing today in 2024 is that there are a lot of people who refuse to do that. They don't, they won't do the work. They don't feel maybe safe enough, some of them. Um, and so they stay hidden in a marriage, but there's no excuse for that level of deception. Um, they are typically though, not really trying to come out of the closet. They are trying to have their cake and eat it too. And so what I see is that um, they are never satisfied in their relationship and they have a way of blaming the other person who's never living up to their expectations. And a man who's, and this is mostly a male problem, okay, because women have been far more comfortable coming out, but um, a man who is never happy with his wife is always just sort of accusing his wife of like not being attractive enough because she's not a dude. She will never be a dude. Um, you know, they may, in some warning signs here, they may be really into anal penetration. They may have you wearing equipment, you know, I don't know what I'm allowed to say on here. So anyways, read between the lines. Uh, they may like a lot of role playing in that way. Um, they may be very open in the relationship. They say they want to bring other people in, you know, let's swing, let's explore, let's have an open relationship. But you could also see the polar opposite where uh, they 
refuse to address any aspect of what they really want. Um, they are like robots going through the actions in bed and they act like they have zero homosexual tendencies whatsoever. And um, they may also be hyper-religious church leaders uh, really into like, you know, being a model citizen or uh, being like the helpful, you know, person all the time on like committees or volunteering or coaching and all this jazz. So they're just, they're just, it's a little extra. It's a little too much, you know, they're, um, thou doth protest, protest too much, you know, they're pushing an agenda and it's obvious, but you probably thought, well, they're just a really good person. Uh, you know, they're just really into um, making sure they're there for everyone. No, they're into building up a reputation so that they don't get busted for this. And so that if and when they do get busted for this, no one would believe it. So you need to, you know, pay attention. I would say the easiest thing, what are they like in bed? It's either too rigid or it's a little loose beyond what you're used to. A little, little curious. Hmm. You really enjoy that, huh? Okay. You have to have that, huh? Okay. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if they are seeing other people on the side, if they have a whole private life and they really just need to come out of the closet and be gay... Uh, you're just being used as a pawn and a tool. And again, I wish I could say the majority of people I see doing this are really trying and they're really scared and they feel like they're going to be victimized by it. But a lot of them aren't thinking that way at all. Again, they just want their cake and to eat it too. So how can you catch them? Um, the easiest way to catch them is to, um, Pay attention to when they're not very available to you. They're not really available to you or there's not a ton of interest in you, especially in the bedroom. Um, that could be a period of time where they're going and meeting up with um, other guys. Uh, if you go out of town, you could lie about it. You know, I would just be like, oh, I'm leaving for a couple of days or I'm going to see my siblings or I'm going to hang out with a friend or I'm going, you know, like fake a trip and then like get a hotel room, um, go somewhere else. But say you like left, left. It's best if you can pretend you, you got on a plane and like you're actually going to be gone. They'll let their, their guard down. And when you have left you're going to start noticing that when like you reach out to them, they're not available for like big chunks of time or there's inconsistency in their regular patterns and schedules. Now, when you get home, when you get back, okay, or again, if they're going through a period of time where they're really distant from you and they're unavailable, check all social media platforms that they're on. Check if you think there are any fake accounts that they may have. Um, check their phone. Now, especially if they have Apple products, Apple products are all connected. So a lot of cheaters or closeted, uh, gay people are cheating and then they forget to delete their messages. Um, and there are pockets of messages when you leave. Okay. So the second you get on that plane or they think you did, the second you go off for your vacation, it starts right there, okay? So you know exactly when to look. You're not going to be sifting through days and days. It's the minute you left is going to be the easiest time to catch them. Or again, as soon as they start pulling away and becoming unavailable to you in any way. So um, for Apple products, for example, they often like text something and they think they deleted it from their phone. Now they did delete it from their phone, but it's still going to show up on an iPad or another Apple device. Okay. So make sure you have access to all of that. Um, also you can go through their phone, for example, and, um, you know, if they, if they've got you blocked out of there regularly, that could be, you know, enough of, of a red flag in itself, especially pay attention to when that type of thing happens. You know, did you just leave? All of a sudden you're blocked out. Um, 
but what a lot of people do is they delete uh, something like a message or kind of like with your pictures, if you delete a photo, it's still there. It's just in a different file. So learn their technology. Um, yeah, look in trash. Uh, look, look everywhere. Okay. Where maybe it, most people are sloppy, especially if you give them no indication that you're looking for any of this. Um, you can also check their activity after they go to work. So that's a common thing to see um, is that they're saying they're going to work, especially if you haven't traveled lately. So, you know, they're like dying to meet up with this guy and, you know, they're really probably having to do it like on the down low with you still being in town. And so they'll do it when like they say they're at work or they had to work late or something like that. So try to check the devices then. Um, also, and this is a blanketed message, if you're dealing with someone who's closeted or if you're dealing with a cheater um, or someone who's doing triangulation, uh, you should not just be checking their messages like, you know, every couple of weeks. You're going to want to check several times a day if you can manage that and around the peak times of activity, like I mentioned. All right. Let's move on to number three, identity theft. This is your imposter friend or this is your imposter lover. This is someone who comes in using mostly narcissistic, but some sociopathic techniques. They essentially want to steal your life. They want to steal your identity. They want to steal your personality, your characteristics, the way you speak. They will infiltrate into your friendship circles, your family, your coworkers. They'll convince your boss that you are doing something fraudulent there. They'll convince your friends that you're talking trash behind their backs. They'll say horrific outrageous things you could never even, you know, fathom to start turning people against you. And the whole time to your face, they're, you know, giving you gifts. They, you know, they appear to be a friend. Uh, they seem loving and adoring. Um, they want to know everything that you're into and what you're all about. And they've essentially swooped in and are now like dressing like you, acting like you, talking like you. Um, their goal is to, it's almost like body switching. Okay. They want to eventually siphon everything out of your life until it's so destroyed. It is now theirs and you're nothing but a shell. This is scarily common. And I do see it with, for example, I've had countless students do this to me. They come in. Next thing I know, they like to sit right next to me and they have to start making sure like their feet touch my feet or their chair is right up on me. I had to start creating, um, you know, 10 feet rules <laughs> or whatever, five, you know, um, and then they'll start dressing like me and then they'll start talking like me and then they steal my posts from social media and then they steal my curriculum and they're regurgitating it. And then, you know, I had to go get lawyers. I have a anything you steal off my curriculum. I have a one hundred and sixty one thousand dollar lawsuit against you for that. Now, I had to go to great lengths. This was happening over and over and over again. It was incredibly creepy. It hadn't happened to me since I was in high school. So. I've also had this happen with three exes who tried to come in and they seemed like whole people in the beginning. And then my back started to get up. I couldn't pinpoint what was wrong with them. Um, and I was just careful not to move forward with them. Thank God I followed my intuition. But ultimately what they were doing was they were infiltrating with my friends, infiltrating with my coworkers or people who, my employees. Uh, they were acting like me. They were trying to give readings. They were trying, they were basically becoming me. Now there is a phenomenon where we see this mostly with women where the men that you get with, they have no personality or identity. So they steal your identity. They steal your hobbies. They steal your energy. They steal your friends. They steal everything. Okay. So this is a more common problem than what you may think. And you may be listening to this and be like, that's nuts. Is it though? Think back. Uh, you know, somebody did this to you and like, 
probably middle school or high school, but how as an adult has this happened to you? Um, maybe you just caught it early enough, you know, or your friends didn't fall for it, but it is happening and it's happening more frequently. So this probably shouldn't be at the end of the list, but you know, pay attention to this. So identity theft, it can be incredibly dangerous and destructive to your life, especially if they get to a point where they've siphoned everything and they have successfully turned everyone against you. Um, you know, it may be really hard for you to recover. Um, it's almost like starting over again. So First red flag is the last red flag. How can you catch them early on? Be cutthroat about it. Like I said, um, the minute they use your words, I would cut them off. Now, we do have a phenomenon where if people spend a lot of time around each other, they sort of like when they say you become the five people you spend the most time with. We do have a phenomenon where when people spend a lot of time around each other, they can sort of mimic each other's accents, you know, but really for that to happen early on in a relationship is deliberate. It isn't that. It is unnatural. And um, they're trying to use your words. So anyone who steals my phrases, right, anyone who steals your social media posts, but like like duplicates it. They remove you from it. So it doesn't look like it came from you. It came from them. They get the credit, you know, little things like that. First red flag is the last red flag. If I were you, what I would do, if it's a, if it's a love partner, dump them immediately. Okay. This is a toxic infection that is probably worse than what you realize. Okay. So you're going to have to clean that out and take the antibiotics, but dump them immediately. Uh, if this is a friend who's somewhat getting into your friendship circle, this is happening at work, start letting people know what you saw. Start protecting yourself because you know they're trashing you behind your back. So go ahead and start saying, you know, this person made me uncomfortable. Or if someone invites you out and it's like, so-and-so will be there. I'm uncomfortable with the way that person has been. da 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 da, -da. Okay, speak up. All right, let's move on. Number four. This should also probably be moved up the list because this is getting increasingly worse. Okay, 10 most common betrayals and how to catch them. Thank you for being here. Please give this video a thumbs up. Please do subscribe. If you are on YouTube at Ask Ivy and you want to become a member, hit the join button. Everybody drop a comment or a question. Donations are appreciated. All right, number four, parental alienation. Parental alienation is where someone you're co-parenting with, maybe you're uh, married to. This could also be happening in family dynamics of any kind. You are watching this person, usually the other parent, turn your kids against you. They're going to typically say, you know, you have too many rules and they're the fun parents. They have no rules. They're going to say that you're you're crazy or you're imbalanced while they're gaslighting you and abusing you and financially kicking you in the gut, not paying for anything for the kids and taking advantage. They want to showcase how you're having a reaction to that, a totally reasonable reaction. They are involving other family members to be on their side and help with the abuse, the triangulation, the gossip against you as the good parent, the reasonable parent, the stable parent, who wants to parent. This is a person who never wanted to have kids and doesn't intend to ever take care of those kids. But those children to them are an extension, extensions that they can use to get their needs met. They don't want to see those kids advance. They don't want to see them grow up. They don't want to see them learn anything. Uh, they just want to be able to siphon off of them and drive them into the ground. But in order to get that done, they have to eliminate you. So parental alienation, if you look at the DSM-5 and some current you know, studies and some research that's getting pushed real hard in through the court system um, and the medical system, mental health system, you would see that they're trying to get this on the DSM-5 
uh, for the children, where children show particular signs of parental alienation. For example, the good parent, the normal parent, the healthy parent, they'll hate that parent. And they will not have good cause to hate that parent. Um, they will abuse that parent. They will also hate anything connected with that parent or anyone connected with that parent, maybe even that whole side of the family. And then they have a parent they worship, a parent they have parentification with, they have to take care of that parent. Uh, they feel that that parent is a victim, you know, oh, you know, this uh, dad's poor or, you know, dad needs me. It's sick. And it is something that happens so slowly, you may not realize until there's a break, or we would say this child is like splitting um, in their personality that, um, you know, that you realize how bad it is. So parental alienation is something that is, is also not um, protected enough in the legal system yet. So we have to sort of get it in the mental field to a certain place of recognition uh, before it's really working out in the court system. Um, but even then, the damage is typically done, okay? Once uh, that toxic parent has turned the, the children or the child against you, whoever, whatever the targets are. Now, you can catch this uh, as early as possible, but this is where I see a lot of people struggle to say the first red flag is the last red flag because they're usually married to this person. Or how do you cut someone off you have to co-parent with for the next, what, 10, 15 years? How, how do you take action when the legal system isn't necessarily going to back you? We don't have enough proof of this. How do you do this? Okay. So that's a class for another day. Let me know if you have interest in hearing me do like a church sermon on this or, you know, a class on this, I could do that. But ultimately what we're talking about is the first time you see a red flag and that's going to really start with the kids are acting distant with you or one of your children is rejecting you. One of your children doesn't want to hug from you. They don't want to get in the car with you. Um, you know, they, they, the, other parent is calling them a lot. The other parent is having private little conversations with them a lot. So once that child is distant with you or says something to you, like you're bad, you did something wrong, uh, maybe they're not excited to take like a trip that they would have normally loved to go on, right? They're, ba they're basically treating you like you're bad. Um, you need to start documenting immediately. And this would have helped so many people in so many different ways, um, especially through like custody battles had this gone on earlier. So start documenting immediately and save like voicemails and things where this other parent is um, trying to confuse you, like switching up dates so you don't show up. Maybe you miss a school play because they lied about when something was, or they said they were going to pick up the kids, but they abandoned them there. And then they said you were supposed to be picking them up. There are all kinds of things that go on like this. Okay. So start documenting everything. There's more there than you realize. Let's move on to number five. Ladies, my God, with this, especially you younger girls, um, baby trapping. Let's talk about baby trapping. So. When you are dating someone early on, they may grow an attachment to you or they want to make sure you're not going to leave. They know they're not good enough for you. They know they can't maintain this sort of image that they're presenting forever. So they want to make sure they've got you stuck somehow. Not necessarily in like a marriage. They're not necessarily going to pay for the kids diapers. They're not necessarily going to, act, you know, contribute anything, but they just want you trapped and like in a cord connection to them. Okay. They want you bound to them. So, um, baby trapping is the easiest way to do that. Um, a lot of people who just need a narcissistic supply or they enjoy watching someone's light go out or just abusing someone for shits and giggles, they'll baby trap you and then torture you the rest of your life. So um, this is super duper common and um, usually what's going to happen if you're dating early, here are the ways to catch them. 
they will try to get you drunk or they'll try to like, you know, it's a microdose or they'll try to slip something into your drink, like almost like a date rape drug. Um, you know, they'll try to get you into a position where you're loopy in some way and knock you up. They will say that they'll, like, they'll get you to a place in bed where you're very like vulnerable or far along and they were supposed to bring the contraception and it's like, oops, I didn't. Right. Or they're promising to pull out, but they won't like the, there are a million ways. Okay. Read between the lines. I don't want to get shut down here. I doubt I'm allowed to say any of this, but anyways, um, it's going to typically be that, and it's going to be pretty early on in the relationship. Now, for those of you that are in uh, a longer term relationship or a marriage, this is so sad and so brutal. I see this um, going both ways. So men do this to women, women do this to men. It's mostly, um, I would say, men doing this to women. And um, what we see here is that someone's ready to leave the marriage or they caught you cheating or they have a suspicion that things are starting to fall apart. And so what they try to do is baby trap you and then they, um, you know, have you for another probably, you know, three to five years, if not longer, um, where you're going to keep like footing that bill, for example. Um, we also obviously use this against each other in the court system. Okay. So you're literally kind of trapped. Um, how else can you catch them other than the early on drinking thing, trying to get you loose and crazy, you know, being sloppy with the condoms, whatever. Um, you would notice in the early stages of dating, this person has a really negative dating history. Like, let them talk. The best thing you could do, people, okay, with anybody, a new friend, coworkers, a new lover, let them run at the mouth. Let them talk. Most of us feel uncomfortable early on in a relationship to fill the silence and we almost feel like we're being like on an interview to see how charismatic we can be and how great the conversation can be because we want to hook this person, right? The best thing you can do is shut your mouth, have your ears and eyes open and allow them to talk and process what energetically is coming to you when they talk. Because the way someone holds their body language, the way someone dresses, the way someone speaks is rarely their authentic self. And so the energy never lies. And so pay attention to the things that they say and don't say, how it makes you feel, whether or not you get your back up at any point. But most of them will come out and blatantly talk negatively about their exes. But in a weird way, like talking terrible about their ex baby mamas, right? Like, but the kids are always with her, you know, or like, I don't know, there's something suspicious about that. Um, so he's probably, you know, baby trapped a bunch of other people. Um, you may also, you know, just notice that they're always the victim when they talk about past relationships or like, their exes are crazy and things like this. Um, when you're further along in the relationship, I think the easiest way to catch that they may do something like this is they try to create a honeymoon phase. <clears throat> so, you know, maybe you guys kind of are on a honeymoon phase. Maybe, again, the marriage was falling apart or they're suspicious that it is or they got busted cheating or something like this. And then there's like hopes and promises and improvements and let's go to marriage counseling. And then all of a sudden they're super duper horny. They're going to baby trap you right about there. OK, so don't that's fine. You know, reconnect. You want to give it another shot. You want to reach deeper levels of intimacy and grow this relationship that doesn't include growing a fetus and being trapped for the next 18 years with this clown. All right. So just be careful how you're doing this. Um, those are going to be key moments where all of a sudden they say they want another one, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's move on to number six. STDs. This is bad. And th this should also be moving up the list a bit 
probably right about now. Um, so it's not just the STDs, it's other like infectious diseases or even just like gross contagious stuff. Okay. And they don't tell you about it and they try to act like I didn't know I had it or like they didn't think you were ever going to know that they had it is what that means. They didn't take the time to protect you from it. Now I have had a couple exes who had disgusting, like, this is minor, but I think this is a red flag, okay? I will never for the rest of my life overlook something like this because if they lied about that, they play dumb about this, what else are they playing dumb about? What else are they capable of lying about? But they had, like, these gross foot funguses, and they tried to use my shower, and I would be like, okay, dude, I see you, like, never wear sandals. It's 98 degrees. I see you never like want to take your socks off in bed or like <laughs> who wears those shoes all the time? Like, what are you hiding? What are you hiding? Um, and then, you know, eventually I would figure it out and I would be like, I think you have this thing. And they would have been trying to use my shower. Well, that's contagious. They know damn well it's contagious. Okay. So like they would have spread that to you and your, your toenails would have turned all yellow and like fallen off. It's just, it's stuff like that that I think people try to minimize and act like, well, everybody has it. No, everybody doesn't have it and I don't want to have it. And the fact that you know you had it and you felt no, no protection over me, you didn't feel enough love and affection or caretaking over me to ensure, you know, that, uh, you didn't spread this is a major wake up call. So, you know, we see, though, typically, and what I see in, in doing relationship reads, and this is a tough one to tell your client, you better get to the doctor and have that thing tested out. Um, often, they don't know it just looks maybe like chronic yeast infections or urinary tract infections. Um, maybe they think they're stressed, and so it's just causing, you know, some some problems down there. Um Typically with most things, men are the carriers and they don't show signs and then it gets spread. And when a woman gets it, she does show signs, you know, so keep these things in mind. Um, they most commonly, though, will and this is early on in the relationship. So how do you catch them? Be careful. Don't ever let this happen. Just make sure that um, especially early on in the relationship um, they're most inclined to kind of be like, oh, well, it's just a passionate moment or I feel I'm so attracted to you, right? Or we're just losing our heads in the moment because the first three months of any relationship, you know, you basically don't have a brain. And so it's like all the chemicals reacting to each other and the pheromones are there. And that's true. It's scientifically proven. But, you know, it's in that little window that they'll try to sleep with you. And the most common thing to get passed on is herpes. And, you know, I've also seen um, a lot of women, you know, decide that they're going to, because their self-esteem typically gets so low after they realize they have it, um, end up staying with these guys or even marrying these guys. And these guys are like, oh, I didn't know I had it. I didn't know I had it. Okay. Well, how, let's use just a common sense technique. This isn't even psychic. How do you make sure that type of thing doesn't happen to you? Don't sleep with anyone without the paperwork, okay? I don't sleep with anyone without the paperwork. And I've had people say to me in the past, really only like one person specifically say, well, that seems a little controlling. Um, what do you want next, my cholesterol? And I said, I don't care about your cholesterol. I don't care about you in this at all. I care about me. And that was a red flag and I wouldn't touch that person again. When you ask someone for the paperwork, you're not asking for the $150 panel. You're asking for the $250 panel. You want the best panel that shows every potential um, STD that, that they could have. And you don't want to see it on a computer or pulled up on their phone. You want the hard copy of this paperwork before you will even consider. Bye, TikTok. Um, if you guys are on TikTok, they're about to shut me down. Probably a couple minutes. Get over here at YouTube at Ask Ivy. That's my first warning. Um, so you want to see that. And if they won't, if they act like that's a big deal, they're either broke and you shouldn't be probably dealing with them anyways, right? Or they're hiding something. That is not a tall order 
to um, get into bed with someone to want to protect yourself. <laughs> Ridiculous. Okay. Uh, so just don't do it. Um, I would also say that this is also the most common thing we see in marriages when you're busting a partner who's going out and cheating or whatever, long-term committed relationships, because um, it could be like gonorrhea or, you know, again, herpes is super common to see. Um, but really anything that's getting passed back and forth. And again, that may look like UTIs, yeast infections. You don't really understand what's going on. Also, the other person may just smell bad or smell weird. You're not sure what it is or when you get together, there's a weird smell. Um, here's the thing I would recommend to all of my married couple clients. Get tested for STDs regularly. Um, because the numbers are climbing and you would be shocked if you look at the stats on how many STDs are being passed between married couples just because there's cheating going on. All right. So never let your guard down on that one. Um, also, that saves you from having to like go through their phone and be the Pink Panther and like lose your mind. You know, just go get tested. I bet they're being sloppy. If they're sloppy enough to cheat, if, you know, they're not caring for you. They have no sense of protection over you. They're not thoughtful about you. They're also not thoughtful about this. This could be the easiest way out. Um, and it may even be something that holds up in court. All right. So uh, typically though, they're going to say, I didn't know. I didn't know I had that. I didn't know. Um, don't let that become your problem because you didn't insist upon their test. All right, let's move on to number seven. Uh, this I typically see more with men, but some women do this for sure. Okay. The fake husband or the fake wife. So these people will find someone they know really wants to get married, really wants to have a family, really will not buy a piece of property for some godly unknown reason until they have a partner to buy a house with, okay, which is ridiculous. Don't do that. But they know that you're waiting on this and they are that missing piece of the puzzle. So what they do is they pretend to be the love partner the knight in shining armor that you've been waiting for. You're forever, you're forever person. And then they never intended ever to marry you. Um, they may baby trap you. Again, men do this to women. Women do this, you know, they may, they may baby trap you. There's money to be made off of that and some power to be had uh, from that. But uh, they will typically never make it to that altar and they'll stretch it out. Every time you think this person is deliberately not marrying me or proposing to me, they will develop a phantom illness, right? a phantom limp. Uh, they'll have a mental breakdown. They'll lose their job. They'll deliberately get fired. Okay. They'll create some type of chaos. They may also pick fights with you and threaten to like leave and sort of punish you for, you know, asking for more. Um, they may give you uh, what a lot of people are calling these days a shut up ring. So they're basically asking you to marry them. So the ring is on your finger and you shut your mouth and they can buy a lot of extra time with that, like potentially years, as long as you have the ring and they just keep postponing the wedding. Well, there's not enough money. Well, I lost my job again. Well, I got laid off. Well, I'm having, you know, this crisis or that crisis. Um, what they are typically doing is making sure that you are there as free labor and support for them. Um, and if they can do it past key years where maybe you're no longer really as fertile as you once were. And so you lost your opportunity, you know, to have kids easily. They've, they have 
typically got you for life. They feel that they've got you hooked um, permanently because you leaving at that point, once you've invested too much, um, is highly unlikely. I think that you may see an increase with abuse and cheating at that point as well. So watch out. Okay. Uh, again, I want to hear from you guys in the comment section. If you've been through this, I would love to hear your story. Please share with one another, support one another, and I will be taking questions and comments. We are reaching the end of this list. Okay. How do you catch them? How do you catch them early on? So before you even get into this hole, uh, first of all, when you're dating and someone says to you, what are you looking for? You say, I'll know it when I see it. If they say to you, tell me about your past relationships, or they try to share with you some of their heartbreak, don't share anything negative that ever happened to you because they're trying to gauge whether or not they can get away with something like that, how vulnerable you are, how how long they're going to have to put in this facade, right, to tie you down. Um, be mindful that if you are not telling them who to pretend to be, if you're not giving them the tools to play you, if you're a mystery, you are owning your independence, you could take them or leave them, they're going to be threatened by that and they're going to see that this is a waste of their time. Their game is not going to work and they'll typically ghost you. Okay. So um, that's how you can get them early on. People who ask questions like that are an immediate red flag anyways. Okay. Now I know on like dating apps or whatever, you're getting to know someone within reason. Okay. Within reason. Everyone's like, well, what do you want? Like if you were to, you know, never, ever want to get married, you don't want to become this person either. Admit it. Just be like, I'm not, look, I don't believe in marriage. That's fine. That's acceptable, you know, but don't explain exactly what your 15 point manifestation to the universe and your hope chest holds, you know, for what you're looking for in a love partner. So they could just mimic that and play you like a fiddle. Um, don't give them anything. Okay. The other way to get out of a long-term relationship where you're stuck in this cycle and you realize you have a fake husband, you have a fake wife or early on in dating, you give them nothing. You give them nothing. Do an assessment on what they give. How do they support you emotionally? Are they an active listener? What do they contribute to tasks? What do they contribute in, um, conversation, you know, what, what do they give to you, right? Are you sexually pleasured or is it one-sided and weird or, you know, what are you getting out of this? Um, are they growing or are they a stagnant person? Red flag, red flag, run for the hills. Okay. Anyone who's not growing or refuses to go to therapy or whatever, run, run now, but make sure you don't give them overreach, okay, offering more than what they deserve. And that's the best way in all 10 of these, really, to make sure that you're protecting yourself and that things are balanced. Uh, too many of us want to, you know, become that wife or become that husband before that position has been earned. And then you're going to feel like I had no one to blame but myself. They really never gave me anything at all. I should have known. You did know. You just didn't want to face that because you had needs. This is a good time to go to therapy, work on your codependency and attachment issues as well. All right. Let's talk about number eight, the thief. This is bad. Um, and this could significantly wreck you. Ooh, so I see this one all the time. I'll be giving a reading to a client and they're like, something's going on, problems in the relationship. And I can't even hear any of that because all I see is that all the bank accounts are drained and that they've spent everything and they have either gambled it away, they have invested it poorly, they're spending it on like um, a side wife or something like this. And I'm like, oh my God. It's gone. 
all the money is gone. Um, these people may also have inconsistency with their careers, like often losing their jobs or getting laid off, but they actually probably got fired, but not necessarily. So this one's a little harder to track in that, but pay attention to those patterns. They usually do this with a love partner who's like a doctor or a lawyer or like, you know, makes a decent enough um, income that it won't be noticed if a lot of money is missing necessarily. Um, but we do see this across the board. So it also doesn't have to be that. Okay. But if you are a high earner, you are at high risk for this happening. This um, typically goes hand in hand um, with drug and alcohol abuse, escapist, and avoidant personality. So if you're with someone and you've noticed patterns of them being like a binge eater or a, they have a porn addiction sometimes or they may do it with video games, but mostly it's with um, gambling it's with betting, you know, it's with risk investments. Um, it is drinking or even like highly functioning alcoholism, drug abuse, even in their past. Um, this is maybe pill poppers, ups, uppers, um, just even recreationally, if they go out with a bunch of friends and maybe like they love going to the casino, they love going to Vegas, they love going for a few days. I mean, they're probably high out of their skulls and you probably don't even know what type of drugs they're on. Most people who are doing this, even if it does look like it's binging, they, they're on other expensive drugs in between just to keep them steady, just to walk that straight line, just to keep stable. Okay. You may not even know what they're, what they're up to. And, you know, it's, uh, usually a combination again of stripping the accounts, um, essentially thieving all their money, all your savings, your money. You probably don't even know how bad this is until like debt collectors are on the door calling your phone. You realize you've defaulted on a bunch of payments and, um, watch their friends. Okay. So another way to catch them is to watch who their friends are and see if there are patterns of this type of behavior, behavior, um, even maybe talking to friends, spouses and things like that. Like where else does this happen in their social group? Um, their coworkers, I see this often where maybe not like in their friendship circle, they don't go off and gamble and use drugs with these types of people, but maybe with like, you know, other people who are in finance with them or they do, you know what I mean? Like coworkers, people you wouldn't know, people they network with that you wouldn't know anything about. They go to the casino and they have people there <laughs> that they meet up with regularly. So this is that sort of crazy hidden life that is absolutely devastating. And you may realize I didn't even ever know this person. Typically when they're outed, they will S-U-I-C-I-D-E, okay, off themselves. Um. So be careful with that one and plan accordingly. And you cannot stay and destroy yourself just because they threaten to do that. Now, most of them won't really threaten to do it. They'll just go do it. But, you know, if they are one of the weaker ones, they'll like threaten about it a lot and expect you to just stay. And you, you just have to dump them like a ton of bricks. There's nothing you could do about that. Um it's sad, that one, because they're so destructive to everyone else and they don't even value, you know, their own lives. Number nine, we've got the user, super common, a uh, hobo sexual, the person who is homeless, the person who doesn't have a car, the person who's always breaking up with an ax, the person who's always a victim, the person who has, you know, a family that they help. They like to seem to be the hero. They're always there for someone else, but no one's ever there for them. Um, you know, there's always drama, always between the jobs, um, fake illnesses. If you start to figure it out, 
uh, fake injuries, fake car accidents, fake arrests. Uh, again, the uh, suicide threats. Uh, you know, it's just it's just an endless fiasco with these people. And um, the minute you really get their ticket and you call them out on it, they disappear and they go on over to someone else they can play that game with. So they're looking for anyone who seems needy. They're looking for anyone who seems to not think things through and is readily available. Someone who is a wounded healer and, and just always has to caretake. Okay. So uh, someone who's codependent, basically. How do you catch them? Listen to the way they talk about difficulties in their life. If everything is someone's fault or a circumstance did this to them, a boss, an employer did this to them, well, if only I had finished this degree, if only I hadn't blown out my knee playing football in college, if only this, if only that, everything, everything is blame game. It's their parents, it's they weren't the fit or whatever. My siblings got more than me. Everything is a blame game. Everything. Um, if they talk that way versus, and here's a great question I like to ask people early on in getting to know them. You know, what was the last major difficulty you had in life? And like, what did you learn from that? How did you evolve from that? If you get like an, I don't know, or they're blaming outside themselves, but they never get to the point. They never get to the answer. They're not transmuting anything in life. That's because this is a game and this is what they are. They're a user. And you're next. Um, this one will also have all the crazy exes, okay? All the crazy ex stories. And they've usually still got one in their life. Um, and last but certainly not least, number 10, or I guess you could say number one on this, the cheater. Uh, this is super duper common, probably, you know, hands down the most common thing that I see. I am shocked and appalled by this and always a bit confused about why people stay in these situations or especially if they're not in like a religious cult that tells them they have to um, like, or the patriarchy, you know, and they think they have to, um, I'm always confused by that. I'm also confused by how they didn't catch it because there are a considerable amount of my clients who really didn't know what was going on. You know, not everyone who books a relationship read is like, is he cheating? Is she cheating on me? Not everyone. A lot of people are booking relationship readings because they're not feeling connected in the same way in the bedroom anymore, or they feel like this person is not emotionally available for them anymore, doesn't really love them anymore. And, you know, they still hope that they see a future, um, but they're not sure their partner does see a future with them anymore or wants to build, yet they're not leaving. And so there's a lot of confusion, you know, basically. Um, but they don't suspect this, and it's usually this. So the cheater, I would say if anything is falling apart in your relationship, they're possibly cheating. Um, best way to uh, catch a cheater is to pay attention to when they pick a fight with you. So cheaters are going to do this move. This is the most common move. Um, they will act as though they're horribly displeased with their lives. They're just depressed, right? They're, they're just having anxiety or something's wrong. And, you know, you feel like you're inadvertently getting blamed in all of this disappointment, okay, in their life crises. Um, and they will become irrational and they will um, be passive aggressive and they may lash out and pick a fight. Um, you may ask them a very simple question about anything or ask them to do more um, and it's totally reasonable and they pick a fight. So when they pick fights, what they want to do is go off and screw other people and then 
um, get you to a place where you fear maybe they're never going to come back or it can't be recouped and you can't even wrap your head around the fact that they're gone. They wait until you're desperate to have them back and then they start um, breadcrumbing and weaseling or hoovering their way back into your life. Narcissistic techniques, look that up, breadcrumbing, hoovering. Now, you don't know typically that they're out there, of course, right? Shagging everybody, but that's a supply that they sort of keep on the side. So they just wanted to go off and play. Okay. And now you're thinking, you don't know what happened. You're confused. And again, what does the human brain do when it's confused excessively and or for extended periods of time? It surrenders, it shuts down. And, um, that's when they know, okay, they can come back usually within like three days of that. So um, you may even go hunt them down. You may even go chase them down. You may even go ask them to come home. And the whole time they're out there cheating. Um, now, some are more discreet about that. They're not full on out there cheating. They're just building up that supply. They're having emotional conversations with this person. They're crying on this person's shoulder. They're like starting to to schmooze this person, they're taking this person out on dates, they're Mr. Charm, you know, they're they're Mrs. Miss Perfect, whatever it is. Um, so they're just possibly building that up also during that time and getting you into a pattern, a rhythm, a routine, a schedule where they're going to be doing this repeatedly. Uh, we could also see that um you know, they're doing this on like birthdays, holidays, anytime you need them, anniversaries. Um, that's in particular a narcissistic tactic that gets used. Uh, but I, you know, also see that here. So that's something just an abuser who wants to wreck you will use. They just are evil and they just want to see you sort of dying. Your spirit is dying. So they abandon you when you're like, you know, expecting them to remember your anniversary or they don't fill your stocking, you know, they don't care about your birthday. But it could also happen if you're like stressed and you're trying to get away and like go to the hairdressers and you've had this appointment you're looking forward to. You try to go on a vacation and they like destroy the house. Um, you know, we would see like learned incompetence. We would see um, or I'm sorry, weaponized incompetence and learned helplessness with this person. You know, they're constantly calling you when you try to go out for a night with the girls or the, or the guys constantly calling you and texting you and there's a drama and something's wrong. Okay. The, it, these can go hand in hand. Um, but ultimately they want to get away and they want to cheat. Um, they will. And here's one of the ways you can catch them. First of all, just pay attention to the patterns I just mentioned. It's not hard to catch these patterns. Um, they're not very creative about what they do. Once they find something that works, they keep doing what works and they do it from person to person to person. Um, you could talk to their exes and find out what the patterns are. Take a shortcut. Uh, but also you, um, can watch for, um, again, them talking about leaving or going through these periods of, you know, distress or actually leaving and then pay attention to their messages again during that time, because that would be a peak moment where there's increased activity on their social media. Um, again, if they have an Apple product, don't forget it's connected to all other Apple products. So even if they delete on that one thing, if they didn't go out and delete on everything, it's still there. And even if they did delete on that one thing, if they didn't go delete in the like other file, it's still there. Just like a photograph, you delete a photograph, it's still technically on the phone. Okay. So there are a bunch of ways to retrieve this information. Um, during those times, but also they keep these people around. So anyone they're going off and cheating with, they're still there. So let's say there is a temporary breakup and you know, now they were just going off to like a stray cat will just go off and like live at someone else's house for a while, you know, and then come back. Um, it's still there. It's still going on. And they're typically pretty sloppy about it after that. So it's not like they'll just go over to this person when you guys are split up. They're probably doing it regularly and on the down low. So again, we're watching for those key things. 
when they're working late hours, when their work schedule changes, when they say they're at work in general, maybe they're not even at work at all. Okay. Um, when they go off to run certain errands or take care of specific tasks, look for receipts, um, look for receipts. Were they where they said they would be, but also are they spending on anything else? Check the accounts. Where is every single penny going? And um, know that it's not that hard to find messages incoming or outgoing on their social media um, once they're cheating with these people regularly, not just when they're gone, okay? Because, again, they keep them around. It could also just look like, you know, somebody commenting a lot on their stuff. Don't forget, the people they're cheating with don't necessarily know they're on the side. Um, they probably think they're the only ones, too. But, like, you know, they may be showing up on their social media. Who comments a lot on their Instagram? Who's hearting all their stuff? You know, who's whatever. Gross, gross, gross. Okay, so um, hope that was helpful. And again, um, this is all, I think, far more common than we realize. Hence 4B. Uh, all right, so we've got Christina Hernandez, Demetrius, Shauna Flint, Samantha Winger, Tammy Rogers. I am going to get on to questions and comments now. If you wanted to ask a question, but you're on Instagram, uh, please post it here on YouTube at Ask Ivy because that's I'm producing tonight, so that's the only way I can see it. Okay, let me move up here and see if we have any questions or comments. Okay. Um, I miss you too, Tammy. Good to see you. So Samantha Winger asks, do you think people can be born intuitive if it runs in their family? Well, we're all born intuitive, so everyone has, and I think a big reason people are able to get away with these this horrible list of things is because we live in a society that has told us that we're not intuitive, or if you are intuitive, it's demonic, and this is not something you should entertain. Uh, so we have taken our indigenous roots and our natural ability to connect uh, with our psychic, mediumistic, and empathic abilities um, to know things and to trust our gut, we have taken that and to even trust our bodies. Our bodies give huge warnings about these things. And we've said, no, instead, you're going to trust only doctors. No, instead, you're only going to talk to the priest, you know, no, um, we are to trust, you know, uh, other people, uh, marriage is death till death do us part. You know, we all need to be married by a certain age and have kids, but we trap ourselves in these systems and we deny our intuition every single step along the way. If you were just listening to your innate intuition that everybody has, everyone's a psychic, everyone's a medium, everyone's an empath. There are degrees, there are levels within that, yes. But if we had been paying attention to that all along, we would never find ourselves in these positions um, because we're always shown typically through prophecy in dreams when someone's doing us dirty behind our backs or if someone bad is about to come in, you know, things like that. Um, but um, yes, it does tend to run in certain bloodlines and families more than others. 100%. And we would see that also with the Claire's, Claire empathy, Claire sentience, Claire audience, like the ability to hear spirit in your head. That one's super hereditary. There are some Claire's that are also very hereditary, as is empathic ability for sure. Um, okay. Christina Hernandez says this was super helpful. Good. Okay, you guys, I'm glad uh, this helped. Again, wherever you are, drop a comment. I'll be checking them out once this is published. And uh, this will be published immediately on Facebook and then on YouTube probably by tomorrow around this time. Let me know if there are other topics you would like to hear me do a show on or if you want an extension on any of the things that I talked about tonight. Be safe. Good luck out there. Love you guys. Thanks.